Hello everyone. Today our biology lesson is for first preparatory class following the Egyptian curriculum and the lesson is about cell theory. I hope you enjoy this video and I hope it benefits you some way. Okay, the things you need to keep in mind after this lesson is you should be able to explain that all living things are made of cells. You should be able to name the scientists who work very hard to come out with a cell theory and you should know their efforts in very small sentences, of course. At the end, you need to name two main types of it, microscopes. You need to know about them and some informations to learn about them. The most important aim of this lesson is that I really hope you get inspired by these great scientists' work so that you can be ambitious when you grow up and help humanity. Okay, so first we will start with the key terms, the important vocabulary. The first word is cell theory. If you look here, you'll see a picture of scientists sitting together. So how? what is a scientific theory? Scientific theory, it's uh, when the scientists combine all their researches and work and evidences and results and experiments on a specific topic to prove it right or to prove it wrong. So when they're sure that it's right and that all their work supports it, they communicate it to the world by making a theory. And today our the, their theory, the scientific theory we're going to learn about is about cells. The second and the third word are types of microscopes. So number two is light microscope. Maybe you have seen it in your science lab at school. The third one is the electron microscope, which I don't see I've seen before. It's huge and it's used by scientists. Okay, now another question is, what are living things made of? You know when we were kids, we used to play with Legos that look different. And those small pieces of Legos could be used to make a whole city. Look at that, it's great. We can think of cells in the same way, that they're very small, tiny units but we cannot see them with our own eyes and all together they join up to make up living organisms okay our next question is do all cells look the same so to answer this question you can ask yourself well do they all have the same job does our body have uh, does our body have only one function our body does does a lot of things now let's look at this red blood cell. It is circular. It is very tiny. So why do you think it's not triangle? It's not a rectangle. Would it be able to flow in our small arteries if it was another shape? Would it be able to carry oxygen if it didn't have that flat surface? Alright, so the answer is no. That's why different cells have different shapes and sizes because of their functions. Here is a plant cell. It looks different. It has a cell wall. It also has chloroplast. Cell wall is to support the cell, to support the plant. Plant has no bones. And also here, the, um, uh, the small chloroplasts are for the food. You know, plants don't go hunting. They, go, they don't go shopping. They make their own food. Different cells in plants and different cells in living things have different functions so they look different. Okay, another question is how did the scientists find out about the cell that we cannot see with our own eyes? We'll put our thinking cap together and we're gonna go through back uh, through a time machine back in time to visit them and learn about how did they find out about cells. Okay, we will land first at Robert Hooks office he was a scientist architect and engineer which is really great it's a very inspiring now what did he examine under his red microscope that i can see from here it's a piece of cork you see the the bottles carrying sand now it's shut with a cork that piece of cork he put it under his microscope right there to see that it's made of tiny tiny um like small units together. He called them cells, an interesting word. A cell is like a room. If you open the dictionary, it's a small room. 
And just like in prison, you know how prisoners are put in different small rooms? That's, uh, these are cells. So that's why um, he named what he has seen under the microscope like cells. Here is the bee. She wants to tell us that what he has seen under the microscope and called cells kind of look like the honeycombs. Interesting. And now we're going to visit another scientist as well, Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek. Now, Mr. Anthony loved so much the lenses, so he collected his lenses and he made his own microscope. With his own microscope, he could see things 200 times bigger, so it's his love for lenses and curiosity and questions that led him to, to make that microscope and observe things. He was the first scientist to observe the cells and to observe uh, microorganisms and the pond. See your love for science where it can lead you? We're going to visit another um, scientist. It is Mr. Matthias Schleiden. Now, Mr. Schleiden, what, did he, what was his work about? It was about plants. And he found out that all the plants are made of cells. That was what he found out. Because his work was about cells and the works of scientists before him that he used was also about plants, sorry, plants only. And next we have Mr. Theodor Schwann, which has an interesting point. His work was also about cells, but it was for all living organisms. So he found out and he concluded, using his work and works of others, that all living things are made up of cells. So Mr. Theodor Schwann made one big point in the cell theory. At the end came Mr. R Dr. Rudolf Virchow. Now Dr. Rudolf made, uh, he concluded actually using his work and the works of the scientists before him, he concluded two-thirds of the cell theory, two important points. It's that cells come from other cells that come from other cells before them. So cells are not just made in air. You cannot just sit right now and look with your microscope in the air and see, oh, a cell just appeared. That cell have, has come from another cell. So cells come from each other. They were created from each other. That is one important point that he made. Another point that he made is that cells, they have functions. They are living, so they have functions and they're the basic functional units of living organisms. Now together all the works of the scientists were combined to come up with the cell theory which is the first point. All living organisms are made of cells. This is the conclusion of Mr. Uh, Theodore if you remember. Points two and three are the conclusions of Dr. Um, Dr. Virchow. He said that cells are the basic functional units for all living organisms and that all cells come from cells that existed before them. Now, we're going to take a quick look on the two important types of microscopes. One you might have seen in the science lab in your school is the light microscope. The second one is the ones that scientists use, use in labs, more complex. It's the electron microscope. I don't think you have seen one before. Okay, we're going now to compare and contrast the light and the electron microscopes. We're going to see the main differences and the main similarity. Now, the light microscope functions with the aid of light. It needs light, either from sun or artificial light, but the electron microscope doesn't need light. It works by a beam of electrons moving very fast. The light microscope was available. It was the only tool that scientists could have until 1950, but the electron microscope started being used in 1950. That's why scientists replaced it, um, replaced, sorry, the light microscope by the stronger electron microscope. Now, the magnification of the light microscope is up to 1,500 times the actual size, but in the electron microscope, it's up to 1 million the actual size. Powerful, that might. So, 
Light microscope, it's weaker because the light has a longer wavelength, which gives images with uh, lower resolutions and that makes us see and study less details. We'll stop electron microscope. Electrons have shorter wavelengths, so it produces um, pic images with higher resolution, so we can see more details, we can study closer. The magnification, now that's a calculation you will need to know for your exams, that the magnification in the light microscope is equal to the magnifier of one lens, multiply the magnifying power of the other lens, so you multiply them together. But the images uh, in the electron microscope are produced on the sensitive photographing board or on a fluorescent screen, which is a different point that is not mentioned to in the light microscope. There are two types of electron microscopes, the scanning electron and the transmission. Scanning electron is to observe cells only, but the transmission is to see the internal parts of the cell, what's smaller, what's inside the cells. Of course, both enabled scientists and enabled people to see smaller things inside living organisms that we cannot see using our own eye. Now we're going to wrap up the lesson quickly. What we have learned today, we have learned about cells. Cells, they are explained in the famous cell theory, which is made of three points that we have uh, learned earlier. All living things are made of cells. Cells are basic functional units for all living organisms. The third one, all cells come from only pre-existing living cells. No cell appears randomly. Another important point is that cells, they come in different what? They have different jobs, so they look different. They have different shapes and sizes. Cells are seen and studied through the use of which tool? The famous microscope. How many microscopes we have? Two main types, which are the light microscope and the electron microscope, which is divided into two smaller types. One that we can use to see the cells, the scanning and the transmission to see even what's inside the cell. At the end, we have an interesting question to sequence the order of scientists and their efforts in the cell theory. The first one we visited, who was it? It was Robert Hooke, who observed the cork piece, and he has seen it made of smaller units, which he called cells. Then we visited Mr. Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek. He made his own microscope. He observed microorganisms and cells. He was the first one. Matthias Schleiden, he studied only about plants and his conclusion was only about plants, that they're all made of cells. Mr. Theodor Schwann, he deduced and he concluded all living organisms, not only plants, they're all made of cells. In the end, Dr. Rudolf Virchow stated that cells are the basic functional units of the living organisms and that all cells come from pre-existing living cells. I hope you benefited from this video. I hope you got a small idea of what the cell theory is and how we reached, um, how scientists could reach it. Thank you for watching. I hope you benefit from this video. Thank you.